Hey guys, and welcome to my next video. This is Mickey Treat in Rochester, New York. And I restore and refurbish vintage jukeboxes and plan on opening a jukebox museum. And this is part of jukebox history right here. And I thought we'd show you a little bit about it. So this is a 1928 Mills High Boy. First year Mills manufacturing made a jukebox. And we're going to go over this a little bit, but let's uh, let's start with the uh, some info on the internet. Here is my iPad, and you can sort of see that they made a couple models. They made a non-select, the model 800, right here, and then the model I have, the 801, which is the high boy, first select model in their inventory, and then the next one had a radio built in. And this is really part of jukebox history. We'll scroll down and take a look at some sort of restored ones. And uh, you can sort of see uh, how ornate it is, even though it is square. Um, very interesting. I like this over the candlestick, this light fixture here that lights up, which I think is really cool. I'll have to find that for mine. Uh, and then there was an article or advertising right here. And some more info on it. So it's interesting when you get your hands on one of these, how cool they really are and what part of history they uh, were as far as popular music back in the late 20s. This sort of brought it into, uh, with amplification, amplification came out in the uh, middle 1920s. And now instead of having an acoustical uh, way of playing your music through like a Victrola, or Edison cylinder player. Now you had an amplifier that amplified the music through the speaker, which was loud enough, and you could put it in public locations and in bars where there was people making uh, noise and talking and stuff like that. So this was a pretty big deal, and uh, you know it's part of history. You could see how this guy restored his amplifier. Look at that. That's what I want to do to mine. Just beautiful. All coin operated. There is the mechanism. And there's those light fixtures I was talking about right there. I don't have these, but I'd like to find these or some, some, some something similar so when it lights up, it looks pretty. Uh, that's the back side of the amplifier. And a speaker original speaker which I have the original speaker which is cool so let's take a look at mine and uh, there was a I bought it at an auction so there was a sticker on it I haven't gotten all the uh, thing one of the things I like about this jukebox is the etching on it right here you could sort of see and uh, there's a guy on uh, YouTube it's got a working one of these all working and he's done four or five videos uh, of it and uh, I'll put the links in in there hopefully he's going to be helping me out but uh, here's the original doors with the uh, beautiful etching on it here and you have the original coin mech place five cents in the slide and push in insert one to five nickels and play instrument continuously and this does have the original coin gear and mechanism in it with the original speaker and original grill cloth. Very, very interesting. And these are original right here. Let's take a look inside this. This is where you would put your selections on this piece of paper right here. And this is where you turn the dial to get your selections and the selection turns this. This is sort of loose right now, so I'm gonna to have to repair that. It's got the original holders, as you can see, where your uh, where your light fixture goes in. And I want to get something that goes around that, maybe something Art Deco, so it lights up. That would be cool. All these spin freely. You can see they have records on them, and uh, everything's there. The mechanism's there. The tone arm. We have it taped so it doesn't flop around. All the motors, stuff like that. And this is uh, the plate for the mechanism. Mills Automatic Phonograph. Mills Novelty. 
and it has the patent dates 1916 really really cool stuff I can't wait to see this thing restored it's beautiful um, I'm gonna redo the cabinet and uh, it's gonna end up in uh, the jukebox museum I'm gonna do and I think there's supposed to be a plate or something here and it's missing so I'm gonna have to find out what this is supposed to be and get that uh, hopefully from uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, sides of it really really interesting let's go around back here and you can sort of see the mechanism I've got the, they have this tape I think I'm gonna pull this tape off they just don't want the parts flopping out but I'd like to see there we go there we go get rid of that this is the uh, this is the head with the cartridge on it right here and this is loose but that would come down on the record right there and obviously there's a motor over here right back in there so there's a lot of work to be done here I want to take this whole base out and redo it and paint all the motors and and all that sort of stuff really really cool these are the back sides everything's spinning freely but this is a whole base mechanism I'd like to unbolt it and take the whole mechanism out so we can repair it properly here's the amplifier down here this is really really cool see if we can I'm gonna have to clean that something it's the same as this one right here Oprah radio OPER radio dynamic speaker and that's the original speaker with some sort of power supply that runs from here into the amplifier and they've got plugs over here and it's pretty cool so I'd like to redo these and paint them orange just like they are and recap the amp and all that sort of stuff this is really cool in here there's our original if the record in playing position comes up too high or runs through the cuts of the turn, then turn the knob on this resistor to the right. So they've got this knob to adjust like the height. Okay, if it's if the record fails to come up to the playing position, turn the knob to the left, and that's what you would turn. This this thing right here. That's pretty cool. With the original speaker and amp all in there, and then over here. You have more plugs down in here that are connectors and these are sort of I don't know they seem to be in okay condition so maybe we'll save that a lot of this is going to have to be rewired some of this wire is really bad right here it's uh you can see it's sort of it's uh coming apart so you definitely couldn't use that this stuff is going to have to be wired I mean basically this is coming up here to this big light bulb right here so obviously you know this is just a light fixture that we can change out um here is the coin mech i'm missing this door so i'm gonna have to have one made hopefully uh steeler the steeler guy that's got the video on youtube can give me a correct measurement so i can get one but the nickel would come down the slide here and then it hits this hits this switch which causes this to stop up and i'm i'm pretty sure there's a a reset coil over there and you can see there's a meter there 10,608 I wonder if that's original and you've got some I don't know if these are what these are they're uh, few yeah these are fuses and it goes into this junction box and again this uh, this needs a door here all right so one of the interesting things I saw about this was this back door now, the guy I bought this from, he he, he died, and, and they had an estate sale um, up near Syracuse, New York. Um, this is uh, spring 2015, and you could see Joe, N-A-S-E-L-L, -L, and they get, have his address, Syracuse, and it says fixed, 1-24-1948. I thought that was really interesting that, that that was on the back of that. 
And uh, this is actually the part that goes in the jukebox. And you see, when you look in, you see this backing here with this uh, with these metal pieces. And then it's got some uh, air vents here. So that's the way the door would go on. This is would be the top of the door, and it would go on the back and that. So, wow. I mean, just to tour this thing and to see it, how it looks right now and what it could look like when we get done with it. I mean, it's complete. Everything's there. Everything needs to be gone through and cleaned and painted and redone. And when this gets done, we'll, we'll, it'll sound spectacular. Let's go back around front and see if we can. Yeah, see, there's that. Uh, let's focus. Yeah, we'd have this re-chromed. That's the original cartridge right there. That's pretty damn cool. And then that comes down. And then there's a motor that activates it. There's a little rubber thing that goes underneath here to spin this at 78. And then this will come down onto the record when the uh, when the selection's made properly and start playing it right here. And then when it gets to the end, it backs off. And uh, it's like a Ferris wheel, this turn, so. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little history tour. This is one of the first selectable jukeboxes ever made. Um, from what I understand, AMI made the first jukebox in 1927. So this is nearly right at the beginning and part of our American history. And it's just interesting to view it and see it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Support what I'm doing because we're going to save the history of jukeboxes one jukebox at a time. And uh, I love it. And I hope you do too. Thanks for watching. For more info, go to my website, coinopnewyork.com. Coinopnewyork.com. If you uh, want to talk to me, call me in Rochester, New York, 585 747 0605. Thanks for watching.